Hey, welcome back. We are having a look at the Freemax Onyx 2. Little pod guy. Another pod. And I always forget to mention, this was sent to me by Freemax. So thank you very much, Freemax. And also, thank you very much for sending me the extra coils. That's really handy. So it's a pretty slick looking little pod device. Um, but I mean, it is just a pod. So that's what we're looking at. Pretty standard. Nothing too out of control. Nothing too crazy with this guy. Um, range of coils. Actually, interesting range of coils. 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 1 ohm, 1.2, 1.5. So there's a fair, fair few coils. Often there's only two available for a pod. So you do get some choice. We've got a battery capacity of 900 milliamp hour on this guy. So that's pretty good. Not bad. And that's about all I really need to say on it. Just, yeah, pod. Go on to experiences. Really, really liked it. Mainly because the coils are awesome. So the coils on these have been just very very nice good saturated vapor good flavor excellent flavor absolutely no complaints about the coils i use this thing for about oh, three or four weeks like all day every day and yeah as far as pods go really really liked it it's got everything i want what i do really like is that you can disable the fire button because i'm carrying it in my pocket all day nothing worse than having that fire button get pressed down in your pocket and then your fry coil uh, that sucks so yeah i just use the obviously the auto draw and disable a button that's perfect you just do a three press of the fire button and that's what disables the fire button so yeah i reckon all pods that have a fire button and auto draw should have the feature where you can disable that good job uh really like the battery indicator on it so you take a drawer on it it shows you the level with three leds and then it stays for long enough for you to actually be able to look at it and see what your level is it's amazing that there are pods out there where you take a draw on it and the battery indication disappears as soon as you stop drawing on it. So you can't see your level because you can't look down at the level very well while you're vaping it. You take a draw and then you go look at it, it's gone already. Don't know what your battery level is. <laughs> so like on this guy, they've had the thought to actually have those LEDs persist a little longer, lit up. Then you go... Oh yeah, three, cool. Straightforward, they should all do it, really, come on. This will be an interesting one because this guy has actually gone bolty on me. So it seems like now it will work at full charge, but as soon as it comes down even barely off full charge, it just flashes all these lights constantly and does nothing, won't fire. Um, so it will be interesting to get inside, have a look, see what has happened. Has it had liquid go inside it? Has something else failed? It's going to be a little bit hard to test if it's just a random component failure, but we'll have a look. Um, yeah, I'm disappointed because um, I just would have kept vaping this. The only thing that's wrong basically with this device, as far as my own personal usage, the damn rubber fill plug. Hate them. I just hate them. They're, they're just not good. They've got to come up with a better system. Well, others have come up with a better system, which was starting with the Caliburn, I think might have been one of the first. The pop-off cap deal. This is the Geek Vape uh, 1. So yeah, the pop-off cap, awesome. Because you just pop the cap, fill it, cap back on. You don't tend to get liquid everywhere. Perfect. Really quick. And you can get the pod completely full as well. Like it's sometimes a pain with these rubber fill plugs where you can't quite get the pod completely full. And that's just annoying because you've got capacity there, you're wasting. Then you've got to fill it more often and blah, blah, blah. Even just opening it, you've already got liquid on your fingers. And then... The thing airlocks when you're trying to fill it. You get liquid come out. It goes everywhere. Ends up sitting down the mod, which is bad as well. And is a mess. And I might be particularly annoyed about this at the moment. Because the liquid I'm using at the moment is a DIY. But it's got um, milk and honey flavor in it. And that's great when you're vaping it. But if you get it on your fingers, it smells like vomit. So <laughs> I get the liquid on my fingers from the damn fill plug. And then I can just smell that. That vomity kind of smell, and it's just not cool. <laughs> Don't like it. Going against the Geek Vape One pod, these coils are way better. Personally, I'll go through this this guy when I do an actual video on it. But um, just comparing these two, for example, the coil quality on these and performance is just way way better than what I'm getting on the Geek Vape. I've only had two coils of the Geek Vape. I've been through about five on the Freemax, four or five. And yeah, yeah, way better. Just not even close for me. This is dry, just doesn't quite have the flavor. This is like saturated, all the flavor, everything you want. You go from one to the other, you just wouldn't use 
the Geek Vape one, sorry, Geek Vape. And it does have the replaceable coils, which I like because then you're not throwing away plastic every time. You just pop that out, pop a new coil in. Good as gold, less waste. Why not? I think it looks pretty cool too. I like that kind of dark look, but has kind of the reflective rainbowy feel going on. Yeah, I quite like it. And that didn't get us anywhere. Damn it. Okay. Might be chisel time again. Oi! Okay, see, now that's broken. <laughs> Whoops. USB-C socket on a small board mounted in the bottom. Seems to be retained just by plastic of the frame. Not a real positive... It's not really super well fixed. Mind you, I did just bend that plastic. Seeming like there's no real way to get this out in a nice way. What am I going to do? That little piece of silicon there was just kind of just stuck on. And that's where the LED shines through. The LED kind of shines sideways and um, through this diffused piece of silicon. Hmm. Okay, so I have got the inner assembly to start moving. I got it in the vise and got the back of a old ratchet and um, just hammered it from above to try and push it out. Now the fire button has gone flying. No idea where that's gone. Gone forever. Anyway, we're pretty well stuffed at this point anyway. Um, so first time to slide it open. Ooh, we're seeing a fair bit of liquid. Yep, look at all that. Can we see that? Yep. Fair bit of liquid got into it. Now I don't remember... I don't remember spilling anything over the outside, so that's all pretty dry. I don't remember ever, ever having a big spill, because you don't know, normally on one of these guys where you got to take the pot out to fill it anyway, because like if you overflow the pod while you're filling it, because you're not, it's not in the mod yet, and I'd normally give it a wipe off with the tissue before I put it back in. So we can only assume it's gone in through the top. And yeah, lots of liquid around there. There's the airflow, maybe, yeah. Two little holes either side for the airflow. I would say through these guys. And that draws in through, I guess, those tiny little holes past the airflow sensor somewhere. Uh, but yeah, plenty of liquid. And it looks like liquid on the board too. Uh, so that could be the culprit for our malfunction. Um, I've used this device way too much to be able to do a proper cell test on it just because I've, I've just done too many cycles. I've done like a month worth of cycles on it. So so we won't be able to read um, the, the original cell capacity. So we'll just have to go by what they're saying on the label, which is 3.33 watt hours, which, yeah, that should be 900 milliamp hour. Let me double check that. And yep, 900 milliamp hour. Okay, so battery is correctly rated. We don't know how well it would have actually performed, but yeah, at least it's correctly rated on the wrap. So that is good. Now we're going to try and get this board out. Small rubber plug, which has also got a lot of liquid on it. It's just liquid kind of everywhere. Small rubber piece, small silicon piece here, which would be for the airflow sensor. That's that guy. It could be either a microphone or I guess a pressure sensor. What it would be doing is picking up on the partial vacuum or the noise of your drawing through this little passageway there. Small hole going up to where the atomizer is, where the atomizer is getting airflow from. Actually fairly large size wires, surprisingly. Kind of bigger than what you normally see in pods because there's such low current flow. Two screws holding the board down to the frame. Yeah, a little gasket. Looks like we've got decent sealing where the plastic is actually sitting inside the metal frame. But I would say it's getting down through the airflow. Yeah, that's what's going to be happening. That silicon piece, this guy won't be sealing particularly well. There's heaps around that hole. Okay, there's the board out. Ribbon cable down to the USB assembly, which is power for charging and... Oh, there's a little LEDs mounted on the strip. Power for charging and the LED or indication. Both the, It's got one small LED here for, I guess, mode. And then these ones here, battery level. Liquid on the board for sure. Like, there's not a lot of liquid on the board, but there is some. It's just kind of everywhere. 
it's all inside this compartment so we've got to say that's a big fail or it could be coming through those pins as well i've got to say that's a that's a fail for liquid ingress I use it for about a month and like that's normal use you know what do you, what else do you do with the pod you fill up the pod I, I made sure the pod wasn't wet around where i filled it so if i leaked a bit of liquid out with the fantastic plug fill method I'd always wipe it off and if it was wet in there I'd wipe it and I'd occasionally stick a tissue down here just to soak up any condensation so like what else can you do really as far as usage I you know not easy on my devices but I'm not I don't abuse them either deliberately and uh yeah I would say that is going to be the cause of our issues there's some conduction from the liquid being on the board it has got a small microcontroller there so because it hasn't outright failed like it still fires it's just as soon as it comes down off like from 90 percent down it just flashes like a lunatic and won't fire and it won't respond to anything until it runs dead flat and then you can charge it again get it to full and use it for you know a couple of minutes and then it does it again so there's not going to be anything else really interesting on this board it's going to be a very basic microcontroller it's not doing much apart from running the leds okay and it's a linear charge circuit on this side which is why it gets fairly warm when it charges i'm seeing some conformal coating on there but in this case it hasn't helped a whole lot yeah so we do have some conformal coating on the board on the back side sort of not covering everything and it's a pretty thin layer Let's see if you can probably just see that fluorescing yeah you can just see that reacting so I kind of missed a few components down here on this side of the board not a comprehensive job and yeah a bunch of resistors and small passives over this side they've missed with the coating so they, they have done a coating it's just it hasn't helped a whole lot but then again a conformal coating i've mentioned before with a conformal coating it's very good to have and it's extra protection but if a board is just coated in liquid and it is left to sit there it'll get through the coating eventually it's not going to completely prevent a failure basically um it's just there is a little bit of extra protection but um in this case, I think we've got a bit of a design fail where I don't know if it's coming through the pins, the liquid. It more looks like it's been coming through that airflow, airflow hole because it's really wet and around there. I've seen other pods do this a lot better, and namely Vaporesso, where they have a small cup. They have a small recessed section where the pod sits. So the liquid isn't going to be going down into the hole that goes to the airflow sensor. It's going to be sitting in that cup. And also the pins are raised up in that same area so the pins aren't going to be submerged in liquid if there is liquid in there and it's not going to go down the airflow and they haven't really done that in this design so when you get condensation that comes out the bottom of the airflow on the pod which is going to happen on this guy it's going to just sit right on the pins and then it's going to flow down through the airflow hole then it's going to flow down through the airflow sensor passage and that's going to end up directly on the board so that is unfortunately a fail which is annoying because this device was great i really liked it oh okay this is interesting i kind of stand corrected here no i don't oh shit it kind of looks like there's a recess section here that could catch any spills before it goes down the pins but no it's not going to work that way because it's all filled up with that silicon or rubber whatever it is so yeah yeah, the liquid's going to go through the remaining empty area between that plug and the top of this plastic. Yeah, so liquid's been working its way around this rubber in there and then going through the passageway into the board. So yeah, pretty short one on this one. Um, I can't say I can really recommend it annoyingly because it performs great. Love the coils. Mod works fine. Looks good. Battery seems to be the correct rating at least. And uh, But yeah now nah, that's disappointing disappointing free max it is a pain trying to keep liquid out of these pod devices because you, you've always got a pod sitting down inside the mod and there's nowhere for it to go but i think what i've seen with the other mods with the recessed area to catch the liquid before it goes down the pins or airflow that's about as good as you can do and um yeah it doesn't have it and doesn't have it in this case just going to either go down through the pins or through the airflow those pins aren't looking very well sealed either. They're fairly loose, fairly loosey-goosey. All right, so that's about all I can say on this guy. Um, yeah, can't say I recommend. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers. I'll see you next time.
Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you've got one of these devices and you've found this video because you've got a problem with yours, it's playing up, there's no easy way to take this apart. Just don't bother because um, I had to be pretty brutal with it in the vice and hammer the whole assembly out and um, you could damage something, you could um, puncture the cell which could explode in your face. Um, chances of getting it back together and, and it not being dangerous doing so slim so i absolutely would not recommend trying to take this apart and trying to spray any cleaner alcohol down the where the pod sits is not not going to help could make it worse uh, it's going to sit in the in the board inside the mod where it can't get out anyway yeah all bad news so basically if you if you have any sort of failure and it kind of goes for all these pods if you have any sort of failure just um go recycle it take it to a battery recycling place and um go get another one so yep that's my warning do not try to take it apart don't try to fix it yep